So hello everyone, uh, welcome back. So now you have seen, uh, I have explained you uh, the canvas, uh, drawing with canvas and Pushpak has explained you the view animation. Uh, now I am going to explain about uh, property animation. Um, so in, sh in short, property animation is a generic method of animation in Android. So as Pushpak, Pushpak has ex explained um, about view animation which can only be applied on views that, that are for example buttons or text views. Uh, now the method that I am going to discuss uh, can be applied on any object. So here I will briefly uh, give a short comparison of both view animation and property animation. Uh, the first of all view animation is specifically for views uh, that I have said uh, that are text views and buttons or uh, image views or the views in general. However, the property animation can be applied on any object including views. So views are also objects so they can be applied on anything. The second difference is view animation uh, can be applied only on few properties, for example, translation, rotation, uh, or the uh, the position, x and y position. However, since we are in property animation, we are dealing, dealing with any object, it can be applied on any property. So here I have marked, uh, so I will explain this in detail later. So what any property means, uh, again, uh, the view, in view animation, uh, if you run the demo later, uh, which will be uploaded by Pushpak, uh, only the drawing of views will be uh, animated. For example, he has shown the demo in which a text view was getting translated. However, if you try to uh, do a button uh, instead of text view, uh, then you will notice that only the drawing of the button will get uh, animated, not the actual button. So for example, all the event listeners will stay in its own position. So you can't uh, touch on the button which is actually translated. So if the button gets translated, uh, you have to touch on its original position, uh, not the translated position. So in that way, you might get confused that only the drawing of views gets animated, not the actual views themselves. However, in property animation, uh, this, rest this restriction has been eliminated and the actual views are can, can get translated or rotated or whatever effects you want to give to the views or any object. Uh, the next difference is um, actually a little disadvantage you can say of property animation that you might have to write more code than the, prop than the view animation. However, there is uh, a little hash that I will explain later that uh, actually we can uh, write this, uh, write our code very concisely uh, so that we can uh, animate uh, uh, animate with property animation with less code. So I will explain that also later. And the last thing that I, I want to show is that uh, view animation is a part of this package android.view.animation. However, the property animation is a part of android.animation. So do not get confused between these two, these two packages. So, uh, so the android.animation package contains these classes. So in, in, the, in the earlier session you saw that the animation is the class, uh, however in this the animator is the main, the, is the root class. So and there are, there is a lot of, uh, there is the entire class hierarchy. Uh, so view animator, value animator is one of the child of the animator class. There is an animator set and there is also an object animator. So I will explain uh, some of them in details. First of all, uh, what are the things that we want, that we, that we can set, that we can specify inside the animator? The first is the duration and the start delay. So we specify the duration in number of milliseconds uh, and the start, start delay also in number of milliseconds. Then we can specify the repeat count, uh, that is how many times the entire animation is repeated and the reverse behaviors that we want to uh, animate in reverse. For example, if we are translating from 0 to 500, then we can also specify that we can translate from 500 to back to 0. So that, that also we can specify. The next thing is time interpolation and type evaluator. So this is a little advanced technique. So you might not need it in every time, 
but uh, I'll explain them in detail because uh, if we are going to develop some games or something uh, more advanced uh, beyond the basic translation and rotation, you will definitely need these things. Uh, so they are, if you understand this, th they are the core of the animation system. And the last thing is animation listener. So that also I'll explain later. So let's start with the uh, interpolation and evaluate, evaluation. So there are two things, time interpolation and type evaluation. So this is the whole system which is set up by the animator, uh, which we can see. So we initially specify the start and end values and duration. So once we set up these things, the animator, the Android system automatically computes the values between 0 and 1. So for example, 0 specifies the start of the animation and 1 specifies the 1 of the animation in timeline. So uh, if we specify the duration as uh, 10,000 milliseconds, so in the, in the zeroth milli when the animation starts, the output value is 0 and when the animation ends, that is at 10,000th millisecond, the output value is 1. This is uniformly, uh, uniformly uh, interpolated over duration. So it is a uniform over this time duration, so which we'll call a progress. So this is a time progress that, that is made by the Android system. Then it will internally call the time interpolator. So time interpolator gives a flexibility that, uh, for example, if we want our animation to speed up during startup and slow down during ending, or we can we want our animation to do some uh, other funky things, then uh, this time interpolator is useful because it tweaks the uh, input time, which is uniformly, which was uniformly uh, spread over the entire duration. We can tweak that time and we'll call this uh, tweak time as a fraction. So it, it is not necessarily between 0 and 1. So I'll explain it later. Um, but it is a float value. So it, we, can, we can assume that as a normalized uh, property animated value. And then since this previous, this value is a float value, uh, normalized value, we want to convert them in our type. For example, we want to animate a color. We want to convert that float value to a color value. So we want to map that value to our wanted value. So the type evaluator will be useful. So then th it will internally call a type evaluator, uh, which will return our wanted value uh, between the start and end values that we have specified of the required type, for example, color or any other object. So uh, in time interpolator, uh, let's, let's uh, see it in detail. Uh, there are some of the time interpolators built into the, the Android system. Uh, for example, there is a linear time interpolator, accelerate, decelerate, uh, anticipate and overshoot, uh, there is a bounce time interpolator, there is a cycle. So for example, lin accelerate time interpolator will speed up your, speed up your animation uh, during the uh, beginning and then uh, slow down your animation during the ending. And decelerate will do the opposite. It will speed up, it will do on a constant rate uh, till the end and in the ending it will go fast. Uh, similarly, the anticipate and overshoot interpolators uh, will do some other things that I'll explain. So also, if, if, you, uh, if your requirements are not specified these built-in interpolators, you can specify your own interpolators. For that, you will have to override the time interpolator and then override the get interpolation method of time interpolator. Uh, so the input value of this method is the current time progress that, we, that I've said that uniformly distributed uh, between 0 and 1. So it will, it will be always between 0 and 1. So you can, you can uh, get at input parameter the progress uh, of the entire, entire, during the entire duration. And then you, you want to tweak that progress uh, to some other float values, so which, is, which is not necessarily between 0 and 1. For example, in overshoot and anticipate uh, time interpolators, they are out, out of this range, 0 and 1. And there is a type evaluator, which will convert your, convert your in uh, tweaked value, tweaked fraction into appropriate type, for example, color or alpha values or integer. 
and uh, this values will be uh, will take consideration of the start and end values for example you want to start from 500 and go to go up to 700 then these values will be scaled uh, appropriately by the type evaluator so the built in type evaluators are float int and argb so argb is for color and float and integer uh, type evaluator but if you want to customize it you can extend the type evalu evaluator and override its evaluate method. So as an input, you can get a start value and value and a fraction that I, was, that I talked about earlier. And in evaluate, you just uh, do a simple linear interpolation. And you in this method, you do not tweak your uh, input values in any way. You just do a simple linear interpolation by this uh, uh, linear interpolation formula. Uh, so this is because uh, your values are already tweaked in the previous step, which is a time interpolation. So you need not take into consideration these things now again. So it is a simple thing. Uh, and also you want to convert your uh, input type, input parameters into a required type. For example, your object, your own object. So here I'll give you an example of linear interpolation. So the first column shows the elapsed time. Uh, so we, we want to animate uh, over the duration of 1000 millisecond. The second column shows uh, the, not the duration, the progress, which is between 0 and 1, which is automatically generated by the Android system, animator, Android system, uh, which, will, which will be taken as an input to our inter interpolation, uh, type, uh, interpolation, yes. So uh, now we can tweak our values. So here in linear interpolation, we do not tweak the values at all because the input values are only already linearly interpolated, already uniformly spread over the entire duration. So we need not, uh, we just return the input values as it is. So uh, in the third column, uh, we have returned the uh, whatever values as it is. And in the last step, uh, which is the type evaluator, we now scale our values to the input and to the start start value and end value, which is, uh, for example, here we, I have given the start value as 100 and end value as 300. We, give, we now need to scale our values according to the formula in previous step between these values. So our output will look like, I, I have shown it in a form of graph. So as the horizontal axis shows the current progress, uh, which is uh, generated by Android system and vertical axis can be assumed as the fraction value uh, after the time evaluation type, time, time interpolation step or type evaluator step. So ty in type evaluator, th these values are just scaled between 100 and 300 and uh, ho however, the other, the graph uh, looks the same even if the scale changes. Next, I'll show the, dem the graph for accelerate and decelerate interpolation. So here you can see that uh, the graph looks a little different, that in, in, in beginning it just slows down, and in ending it just uh, slow, slows down again, but in, in between it speeds up. So for example, here in the, in the third column you can see, in the first, first zero, at, in the, in the first 0 0.2 uh, progress, it just output 0 0.1, which is slowed down. However, in between, it speeds up. So I'll show a demo, uh, on-screen demo later. So this is the anticipate and overshoot operate, uh, overshoot thing. So in this, the interpolated fraction goes beyond uh, the range of 0 and 1. For example, minus 0 0.112, it is negative. And here in the second last step, it is 1.112. So for example, if you want to animate a uh, circle, so we, uh, and we want we have given a start start and end values of 100 and 300, but in the starting it want uh, we want it to go a little bit uh, behind uh, 100, and in the ending we want it to go li little bit behind uh, after the 300 value. So we can specify it with the inter uh, with the overshoot and anticipate operator. So the graph of it looks like sim similar to this. So now this is the uh, small on-screen demo of that, uh, that I want to show it in a, uh, using a shared dash desktop. So this is a small on-screen demo of this. So you can see the linear interpolation goes linearly uh, during the entire duration. 
However, in the anticipate and decelerate, th uh, there is a small speed up in, in, in between the start and end values. Uh, and in anticipate and overshoot operator, the start values and end values are beyond its given range. For example, it goes a little bit behind and then it goes a little bit after its specified values. So in this way, you can uh, specify the interpolation. Now the final thing is animation listeners. Now animation class provides uh, some set of listeners that I think Pushpak has already talked about. Uh, in this, we can uh, specify an anim animation listener uh, and we we'll override its four methods, which is on animation start, on repeat, cancel, and end. So uh, they get fired when the animation actually starts or repeated. And we can do whatever we want. For example, if we want to start another animation on end of the first animation, we can specify it in animation end. Or we want to specify animation cancel, for example, or sh when the animation starts, we want to do something. So we can specify in this, in this thing. Um, the next thing I want to uh, specify is value animator. The value animator is uh, one of the concrete subclass of our animator, main animator class. So here, uh, as you have already seen this diagram earlier, uh, now we won't talk about uh, uh, progress and fraction and the computed value. So we'll just say that uh, we are magically getting the output value from the animator. Now we want to use that value somehow. So how we can use that value? So for example, uh, we, we, the animator class is an abstract class. It does not provide any mechanism for that. So we must, we must uh, use an object of value animator. So in this, we can specify an update listener. So this update listener, update event, will be fired whenever the value gets updated. So it is shown in this uh, red box. So when a new value of our animation gets computed, it will, this event will be fired. And we will listen to this event and do whatever we want to do with this event. And we get the animated value inside this handler. So if we want to, for example, we, get, we animate the value between 300 to 500. So we'll get the uh, value at each, at each, uh, at each step uh, in the animation. And we can use this value to, ex to animate, for example, an object or any, any view or any shape or anything we want. Or we can use it in com combination with the canvas itself. So uh, once we get one feedback of one event, this event will get fired, uh, fired uh, during the entire duration of uh, the animation. So we'll get we'll keep getting the updates uh, during the entire duration of this animation. So this, this loop is repeated uh, till the animation is uh, running. So this is a small snippet of the anim animation that we have, uh, update listener that we have specified. So here we have uh, specified an update listener, add update with the add update listener method and we uh, create a new class of animator update listener and we overwrite the on animation update which is a method of animator update listener and we get uh, a float value as the animation dot get animated value so we get the animated value or we can get this uh, animated fraction which was all actually computed by the android system as get animated fraction so either way we can get some values and we can use that value later uh, in any way we want uh, next, I want to show uh, um, about object animator that uh, I talked earlier that we can use this value and use this value uh, to our object. However, uh, in most cases, we want to animate some property of our object. For example, we have a button or we have something on our screen and we want to animate th that thing. Then in using value animator, we do the things manually. For example, we get the value and then apply that value back to our object. However, using object animator, this, these things are done automatically. So for example, here, O is our object. And we want to animate its uh, property called PROP, prop, from 0 to 250. So here, the property, the, the Java does not have a concept of property. So in this, uh, there, there are methods called getProp and setProp, for example, or 
any anything any getters and setters you have so you write its name uh, without the getters and setters uh, in a camel case so here you can specify the name of that property so this property will get animated will get the final values resulting values during the entire duration of this animation once we start this animation uh, so i want to show you a small demo of that before i continue with uh, next thing so this thing as soon as the as soon as the view is shown uh, that circle gets animated and gets its new value so i have animated the x value of that circle so this is done by using the object animator you can get the code later and you can play around with that code uh, now uh, if you want to uh, for example you don't want any interpolation time interpolation but you want to manually specify that at uh, at the zero at at init initially my object will be at a position 250 at time equal to some 250 my uh, time equal to 250 milliseconds my object will be at some other position and you want to manually specify these things uh, they can be specified using key frames so for example here i have shown that at time equal to 0 milliseconds uh, the x value will be 0 at time equal to 10 milliseconds the x value will be, will be 6 at time equal to 20 x will be 20 for example and so on so this can be done by using uh, key framed animation uh so i'll not show the uh, details of this but just for the information i have included this that you can play around with this later and keyframe your animation so there is also a small demo of it uh a small uh, application that we are currently developing so for example here i have shown a keyframe animation so uh here the the red the red square is keyframed during the entire duration so the duration is 10 10 seconds so the the keyframed values gets animated during the entire duration the next thing is animate animator set so for example if you want to animate uh, two things simultaneously or you want to specify you want to choreograph your entire animations for example you want to start animation 1 uh, and then later you want to start animation 2 uh, and 3 simultaneously and then later for example 4 5 and 6 simultaneously then you can specify with the animator set so there are a set of methods called uh, before after with so you can say that animation 1 dot before animation 2 for example and after animation 3 for example so i'll show the code so here uh, we can specify that we have two object animators one animates the x property of my view and the other animates the y property of my my view and from 0 to 50 and the second one animates from 0 to 100 however we want both to start simultaneously for example we want both to animate at the same time so we can say animator set x y dot play together so it will start both the specified animations together and we can start the animation so both the animations will will be played together however uh, as you can see as as i have specified earlier that the code is a little bit uh, of a problem to some because uh, it is not a uh, concise so uh, you can specify your animations inside uh, xml as the pushback has uh, explained earlier however in this uh, the directory is animator and inside the resource res directory not the an anim directory so this specifies the property animation instead of view animation the correspondence is uh, if you want to specify animator set you sp you specify a set tag inside your inside your xml for value animator you specify animator and for object animator you specify object animator so i'll show a small snippet of that then so here i have said said this is the this is the same example that i have shown earlier about the, using the animator set inside java so i have specified that these two animation should start together with the value 50 
I have not specified value from, so it will be taken 0 as a default. So, 50 uh, the x property will be animated from 0 to 50 and y will be animated from 0 to 100 and they will be played together. If I specify here sequentially, then they will be the first the first animation will be played first and the next will be played next. And we can reference the animation later in Java using animator inflator and load the animator as the pushback is uh, explained earlier. We can load that animator animation to the memory using the current context, we can specify this as a current context if our context, if we are inside our activity or any context. And then we can reference that XML uh, using this, this thing, uh, using this code. And we can, man we need to manually set the target of our animation. So, here I have specified view as our target. The next thing uh, to write a concise, concise code is to use a view property animator. Uh, view property animator is uh, a new in Android API 12, which is Android 3.1. Uh, so it not be my, it not be uh, it might not be available on the older platforms. So here, the entire earlier example can be written in one line. That my view dot animate. This part returns a well view property animator object. It has a method x, y, scale, etc. So, for example, we have specified x. So, it will be it will go to 0 uh, from 0 to x equal to 50 and we have specified y. So, it will go from 0 to 100 simultaneously. So, one constraint of view property animator is that it can only be applied on a single uh, view, sing only a view, not every object and a single view. So, if you want to simultaneously do things, we have to use the animator set that I have explained earlier. Uh, so, I have complete, almost completed the uh, property animation. Uh, I will show a demo of uh, the view property animation inside uh, Eclipse. So, this was the first demo that I have shown. Here, for example, we have used a value animator. we specify that we want to animate a float. So, this, this is the type evaluator that we are already specifying using this method. However, we want to explicitly specify a, our own type evaluator, then we can specify value animator dot of object and specify the object of our type our own type evaluator and then specify the start and end values. We manually specify the duration. So, here I have said 10 seconds. We set the interpolator, here I have set the bounce interpolator and we have, I have set the update listener. So, here also I have to specify the invalidate because at each update of value we want to redraw our scene. So, here inside update listener I have invalidated my view and then started the animation. So, you have seen the demo, I have shown you the demo. And the second code is about view property animation. So, here you can see it is only a one line of code which does the same thing. Since we have applied our view on a applied our animation on a single view and we have animated uh, only a few properties. So, this can be written uh, with using a view property animation. So, uh, this code will be available to you later. And now Pushpak will take over and explain you something about OpenGL inside Android. Thank you. Okay, so this is a very, very brief session on OpenGL ES. Uh, basically, OpenGL itself is a very vast topic uh, that requires a lot of uh, concepts from computer graphics and as earlier mentioned, linear algebra. So, I will just talk about OpenGL very briefly. Uh, so, whatever we saw up to now, uh, all the uh, methods of animation, view animation and property animation, they are all methods of 2D animation, but OpenGL is 3D. You can you can do 3D animation using OpenGL. Uh, so OpenGL is a technique uh, which is developed by a company called it's a, it's a library which is developed by Kronos, and the Embedded Systems version of OpenGL is called OpenGL ES, which works on uh, Android. So as I mentioned, uh, knowledge of linear algebra and math is useful. Uh, we can draw uh, 3D. Uh, uh, 
you can you can basically draw in 3D in OpenGL. Uh, so most 3D games that we see in computers, uh, 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 like uh, m m many games, uh, they are uh, drawn in OpenGL. Uh, live wallpapers are also drawn in uh, OpenGL. So everything in OpenGL is a scene. Uh, whatever we see is actually a scene, and uh, everything that we see on the screen is an object. So uh, I'll just show you a scene. So let's look at this. Now this is a scene in which everything that is that we see is an object which is placed at a at a coordinate system and everything that we see uh, is is relative to the camera camera is also an object in opengl which can be moved as we want and uh, the the objects uh, are lit by using lighting so uh, this is this is uh, a basic uh, opengl scene uh, there are various things that we can do in uh, opengl for example this is a cube drawn in opengl and it's been texture mapped with a with a bitmap image. So this is a cube that that was drawn in OpenGL, and uh, then they uh, then then we took a bitmap image and we pasted it on the cube. So it it looks like a, a checkered cube, but it's actually a cube with which is having a bitmap image pasted on it. Right. So these kind of things uh, are are not doable in uh, uh, 2D uh, graphics like uh, view animation, property animation. This is an example of lighting. This is a scene we see uh, developed in OpenGL. Here we see uh, the scene being lit. Uh, the light light is a, uh, is placed somewhere here. Uh, there's another light here. So these are the effects uh, that can be created by lighting. Uh, this is an example of shading. See, we see two cubes uh, shaded in a very different manner. They are uh, basically shaded by a, a different algorithm for shading. One is very realistic. The right one is very realistic. The left one is not so realistic. It's a a, a bit vague. So uh, these kinds of effects can be brought by using OpenGL and uh, uh, doing shading in OpenGL. So uh, in order to learn OpenGL and Android, you'd first have to learn what is OpenGL. Uh, uh, there are a lot of tutorials uh, available for learning OpenGL, and then putting it on porting in those OpenGL uh, apps on Android it probably will not be that difficult. Once you understand how to use what is the basic structure in which those OpenGL uh, programs can be ported on Android. Uh, so regarding this, there is a lot of documentation available on the, the developer website of Android. Uh, there are sample programs available as well. So you can go through them and learn how to use OpenGL on Android. But first, learning OpenGL itself is very important. Uh, so uh, this is a very short session. And before I finish, I will quickly show you a demo of uh, a simple app developed in OpenGL. So this is a, a scene which is developed in OpenGL. So uh, as I mentioned, these two things are objects. Uh, the pyramid and the cube are objects, and they have a relative position uh, with respect to the camera. And in this scene, the objects are getting rotated by an axis uh, that, uh, that is, that is uh, mentioned uh, while we wrote the program. So this is a simple app in OpenGL. Uh, okay, so that concludes a very short session on OpenGL.